everyone. Uh, thanks for sticking around this late in the afternoon. Um, so, okay. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm here with Mihai from our Romanian team and Martin, who you've most likely seen around, walking around uh, today. And our topic is a navigable OSM map of Canada sooner than you think. So at Telenav, what we do is we provide navigation solutions for, for uh, companies such as Toyota and other um, commercial car vendors. And recently, we, we were tasked to, to map uh, Canada over the past year by finding different ways to map it at the same level that we would want the U.S. to be at when we launch uh, Scout in the U.S. So, so we applied a lot of the things that we've learned from, from the U.S. and uh, applied it to Canada. So with this chart, it shows uh, some of the, like the workflow that we have where we, we take in the, the data from OSM, it gets sent into the, our partner's software, and all the data that we collect from them comes back to us, and in turn, we turn it back to the community to help improve OSM and then it comes back into Telnav and it goes into this loop, as, as you can see here. So here, there's a, just a table of the different methods of um, mapping components that we, that we use to collect data. Um, so there's some that are, require manual editing, and there's some that requires automatic uh, improvements, and also for data collection, either from government sources or uh, something that we'll get into later from Martine about um, this app that we have called Open Street Cam, which you can see at a demo at our booth outside. So with all the data that we collect, uh, either from sensor or from camera, what does that translate to? That what, that what we end up turning, converting all that data into is that we can turn into things that we can convert into map content into OSM. So, um, so that means we can use that, the information to improve the road geometry, um, add turn restrictions, um, lane information, improve the road curvature, um, and free, full, free flow speed, and also add construction zones um, if, there's, if the um, camera app is capturing photos where there's road construction um, during that time. And here's just an example of the auto, automatic uh, map improvements that we have. Um, so this example here is the Golden Gate Bridge where in OSM it's, dr it's drawn as one, one long segment, but for our app, uh, we have it uh, segmented to multiple sections to help improve the, the traffic information. Um, so that, that's not affected in OSM, but it's, we, we take that data and we, we um, break it down for our, for our use for, to improve our navigation experience. And we also do a lot of manual editing as well. So, I mean, there, there were a lot of talks this morning about all, like machine learning and automated type of um, map improvements, but we, we still rely heavily on uh, manual editing. Um, so from OpenStreetCam, we, we collected a lot of uh, information from the ground level, um, something that we can capture from aerial images. So one of the things is uh, turn restrictions and lane information, and also like this picture on the right, um, we can also collect highway sign. So that's, uh, that's very useful um, to help improve the navigation experience, when, especially when you're on a highway and you need to see uh, which highway junction you need to change to. So here are just some of the tools that we um, use that, that we share with the community. So one of them, again, is the OpenStreetCam app. Uh, we also have uh, improved OSM, where we have hotspots of different locations where you can go to um, click down into that road, and then we have like a confidence level on, on um, the type of roads where we need improvements or not. And it requires uh, manual editing from the user, the editor, to, to confirm that the data is good or not, um, and then to go ahead and make the correction. And there's also map roulette. Um, something that we can use in like a game um, with the different objectives and it can jump you around so that you can make corrections all over the world. So uh, now I'll turn it over to Mihai. Uh, he's from our Romanian team and he will talk about um, the team over in Romania and also some of the work that, that they do. 
Hi, everyone. Uh, can you hear me well? Excellent. So, uh, cool. So uh, this, uh, these are uh, the, the people that work in uh, Telenav on the OSM project. The OSM project has started within Telenav um, some years ago, so it's not just, it, it didn't start only with Canada. And uh, at the moment we're uh, around s almost 60 people globally working on, uh, on OSM. Uh, we have a team in the US, uh, we have uh, a team in Romania, uh, the team in the U.S. has made quite a few trips to, to Canada to gather data. And the team in Romania is uh, comprised of people with um, a GIS background, cartography background, and also developers. Uh, the mapping team in Romania has grown quite a bit in, a, in the past, past year or so. Uh, we've grown from six to almost 30 people. Of course, we had some difficulties, but uh, we, we managed to iron them out. Right, moving on to Canada, snowy Canada. Right, so being a navigation company, we're, uh, we need a, a whole bunch of map features and map information in order to make the, the, the application, the software usable for drivers and to offer up-to-date and um, uh, accurate info regarding the, sorry, regarding the real world. So, uh, we have, it starts basically with the routing component that has the navigable roads, the one-way information, speed limits, turn restrictions, and so on. Uh, it goes to the guidance component where we have the road names, we have the lane information, we have the signpost, signpost information, and it goes all the way to the ADAS component that in the near future will, will uh, lead us to uh, autonomous and self-driving cars. Right, so moving on to the Canada map. Um, we, when we started, we kind of organized our work into uh, two main buckets. So our main focus were the five, were the top five metro areas: uh, Toronto, Montreal, Ottawa, uh, Calgary, and Vancouver. And once we've built a good foundation for those, we uh, we expanded our work uh, throughout the rest of the country. Uh, looking at the metrics. Um, Right from the start, we were in pretty good shape, so we were pretty close to our goals, uh, thanks to the awesome work of the Canadian community. And uh, moving on from there, we continued to add more features to the map. Uh, one thing I would like to highlight is the turn restriction information, the turn restriction metrics, stats. Um, so when we started uh, in mid-September last year, uh, there were around, I don't know, in the low thousands, like the actual number of turn restrictions, and now we have around 50,000 uh, 50, turn restrictions in the Canada map. Uh, for example, uh, for road geometry, uh, we've added around 18% of what we have now in Canada, in, uh, in OSM. And as I've mentioned earlier, the, the biggest increase was for turn restrictions. We've added almost 94% of what we have at the moment. In, in OSM in Canada. So here you can see an overview of um, the community edits in Canada with blue and the Telenav edits in yellow and you can also see the, the areas where we've, uh, we've been focusing on. Cool. Right, uh, so far regarding the street, uh, level Im uh, street level imagery, in Canada we've collected around uh, 1.2 million kilometers of, uh, of roads. That translates into roughly 40, 43 million uh, images. Uh, while globally we have uh, 2.5 million kilometers uh, surveyed. Um, that means around 94 million images collected. So I think it's, uh, it's pretty amazing that we're almost uh, close to 100 million images uh, since we've launched OpenStreetCam at State of the Map last year, uh, formerly known as OpenStreetView, but we're going to keep it as OpenStreetCam. Um, so yeah, it's pretty amazing. So uh, I would like for you to uh, give a, round, a big round of applause for all of you that contributed to this. So thank you. Uh, moving forward to our processes and tools, I would like to um, give a big shout out, first of all, to all the people that have worked on these awesome tools, the community, and all the developers. Um, so our, our main, main tool was, of course, JOSM, 
uh, to edit. We also use in JOSM a bunch of useful plugins, and also we, we create various map styles to visualize the data, the OSM data, the external data, all kinds of uh, data sets. Uh, we also uh, use the QGIS to manipulate spatial data. Um, we, uh, for, for querying OSM data, we use the Overpass platform and PostGIS. Uh, we, we use street level imagery, as I mentioned, from OpStreetCam, also from uh, Mapillary. Uh, we have the community tools uh, that we use to engage the community, like Mabrolet and Improve OSM. And one, another tool ex very useful when uh, uh, working in a large team is the tasking manager. So we, we, we didn't overlap or create conflicts in the map and all, all that jazz. Uh, so um, that was all from my side. I will hand it over to Martijn for some conclusions. So uh, we've done a lot, as Mihai, I think, very, very eloquently explained, but it doesn't go um, without a cost. Um, so we, we, we learn uh, as we go along a lot of things. Um, and uh, we, we initially uh, had some, some struggles with, uh, with, with um, kind of ex uh, accepting um, our, our edits with the, with the community. I mean, if, if all of a sudden more than 20 mappers come in and, and start working on areas that you care about, um, that's 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 not always easy. So you, we we have learned a lot of lessons, and I've tried to summarize them them here. Um, we need to we needed to get better at telling people what we we're planning in advance. Uh, we need to allow plenty of time for discussion, especially when it comes to um, yeah things that are not yet fully accepted, uh, tagging, um, mapping styles. Um, we needed to do more research into those local mapping practices, which means reaching out to the top mappers in the area, uh, carefully studying what the what kind of what kind of region-specific mapping is is going on. Um, also, be unafraid to step back, just kind of stop what you're doing for a while and 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 wait for the wait for the outcomes of that of those discussions and just move on to something else in the meantime. Um, of course, obviously. Um, focus on quality over quantity. Of course, we, we produce, like Mia Hype said, uh, a lot of quantity of mapping, but the, the, the focus is really on, on quality, and, um, and we've become much more aware even of that in the past nine months, year. Um, we also added community training uh, to, our, uh, to our onboarding for our map team, because at first the, tr the, the, the training was really focused on the technical aspects, how to, what is a node, what is a way, what is a relation, how to use JOSM, all those things. But now we also focus like, okay, what are you, you're not mapping in a vacuum, you're doing this with all these other people. And, um, and that's something that, that people are not always aware of when they start working for our team. Uh, they're sometimes completely new to OpenStreetMap. So that's a very important aspect that we, that we added. So we did, we've, we've done a lot of those things and you might see them if you go online, um, you see, our, you see our, uh, our, our map team reach out to the community in the US, Canada. We have, we have a GitHub, a repository where we list all the projects that we work on. So there's a lot of improvement there, um, but we, can, we continue to be open to all your, uh, all your uh, feedback and, and, re and requests and, and complaints also, of course. So moving on to some conclusions. So the, what, we, what we're doing it all for is, is, um, is what you see here, or well, um, what you almost see here. Uh, is getting OpenStreetMap into vehicles in, in Canada, and we've achieved that. So I think we're, we're I know we're the first to get OpenStreetMap data into car navigation. So if, you, if, you're, if you're purchasing a 2018 uh, Camry uh, in Canada or the US, uh, you will have access to OpenStreetMap navigation. And we, this, is, this is, I think, <laughs> pretty cool. Um, so uh, I'm not here to, to, to uh, to make, uh, to, to promote Toyota vehicles, but go out and buy one. <laughs> I tried to, I t actually tried to rent one to show you all what it looks like, but they, they don't carry the 2018 models yet, so I was unsuccessful, but uh, and instead I got a Kia. So. <laughs> it doesn't have OSM navigation, and no navigation at all. So a few updates on OpenStreetCam. Um, if you've stopped by our booth, you might have seen uh, um, some of some or all of this. So the, I think the most exciting thing is that we're working with Waylands now. This is a um, sort of a startup, it's a young company that produces this this Hor Waylands Horizon camera. It's a sort of an action camera that's um, that we that we work with them on tweaking both the hardware and the software to be fully integrated with the OpenStreetCam platform. Meaning that you put it in the car, uh, you set some Wi-Fi settings, and from there on out, it's 
pretty much automatic. So you basically you 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 um uh, you start driving, it starts capturing images. It stops when you stop, and then it uploads. When you get to your home Wi-Fi, it will upload everything to OpenStreetCam. So this is a uh, we're prototyping this. Um, and what we're planning to do is um, um, we, we're going to give one away at this at this event. So if you if you haven't uh, if you don't have a raffle ticket yet, one of those red tickets that that are in our bags, please be sure and get one. Um, we're also going to give um, well. Um, before before I go on with that, let me let me just quickly um, show you the difference in in the field of view and and image quality between like this is I was OpenStreetCam app on my uh, iPhone, and this is the Wayland's camera and sim under similar conditions in the same location, so it's a pretty significant um, improvement. Um, so so that's uh, that's I think that's good for everyone because you can just see more uh, glean more from those images and update the map um, with less images you can do more. Um, so we're, we're going to be prototyping this with, with all of you. Uh, we'll be giving uh, uh, numbers of Wayland's cameras to the top contributors with, uh, with, uh, with OpenStreetCam uh, starting fairly soon, in a few months. Um, and you can win one this weekend, like I said. So there's, um, there's, if you like, just start driving or uh, walking around more and capturing more, lots of images, and you might get your hands on one of these. Uh, they're pretty cool. Uh, I've tried one in a, in a, I've tested one in a, in my car for a while, and um, yeah, it's it's basically it's it's become pretty painless. To uh, you don't have to even have to think about it anymore. So I think that's pretty cool. They're not they're not for sale, but we're prototyping them. Uh, you can you can buy the the normal version, but this is just a special OpenStreetCam version that we have. So finally, um, like I think Mihai summarized this pretty clearly. Uh, we, we did all this together. That we, we made this Canada map as good as it is just because um, we worked with all of you to in improve it. We did a lot of work, but we built upon a basis that it was already pretty awesome. So um, I can't thank all of you enough for working with us on that and uh, making this possible. And um, yeah, it's just a matter of where OSM will take us next. I think there is really no boundaries. And I think we've taken a huge leap with uh, with getting OpenStreetMap into vehicles now, and um, we're excited to bring it bring it much further. So, I want to thank you again, and um, come to our booth and, and get a get a raffle ticket and win that camera. Can't wait for you to try it. Thanks a lot. Okay, so we got time for a couple questions. Two really short questions. What what is the how many frames does the wide angle uh, window sh windshield camera take per per second or right? It's a little bit dependent on the speed. So um, it's 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 it takes uh, takes more images when you when you go faster, less when you're slower, and it and it actually stops recording when you stop when you when you're stopped at a, yeah. uh, in traffic or at a so, light. So is it a per meter approximation or per Length approximation. You want it to click more often when the yeah faster. I mean, we try we try to we try to get it at even distances, basically. Yeah, ten feet. Um, ten no, it's a little more than that. Um, I okay. couldn't give you a specific. Yeah, um, okay. yeah it's, uh, but I mean, it's at a certain speed. It, if you drive on a freeway, it doesn't matter as much anymore if you get an image every 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 ten feet. But um, yeah, it's we try to get we try to get. I think it's it's. The, the most data you can get without getting too much, because otherwise it would overload the servers and the... Oh, we don't mind overloading the no, servers. No, you don't. Okay. <laughs> no, upload, uh, upload that stuff. That's what upload. Use. Okay. <laughs> and just I, one last request. Just show the first slide again. I wanted to take a photo of it if you could. Thank you. The very first one? Yeah, the very first one. The uh, infinity symbol. Okay. Thank you. All right, maybe that was the second slide. No, this is it, right? This is what you mean. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right, any other questions? Yeah. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm from Vancouver, and assuming that projects like these are never truly done or over, did you say that there was a GitHub repository listing the current things that are still being worked on? Yeah, two things. Um, we have, we have, of course, we do maintenance, so we still have folks. Um, even though our main mapping effort in Canada is over, uh, we still have people dedicated to maintenance. Uh, so that's going to continue, uh, of course, in everybody's interest, but also in, yeah, in interest of like our the quality of what we deliver. Um, and uh, the GitHub uh, repository will reflect the ongoing uh, maintenance that we do. So yeah, both yes to both. So telenav slash. What should one type in to GitHub? Oh, it's a telenav. Uh, it's GitHub.com slash telenav mapping. Okay. Yeah. 
Thank you. Uh, why Toyota? Why not Dodge? <laughs> why not? Why not Dodge or like General uh, Motors? Uh, or, or to talk about that seri <laughs> more serious, uh, what else uh, uh, car producers uh, did you talk with about? Well, we don't we don't always get to choose, right? It's just um, um, uh -huh. like whoever is our customers. Like we don't. It's not like you just go up to them and say like, "Well, we have a, we have OpenStreetMap <laughs> for you," and they'll take it. And next year, it's in the car. Those are those are long processes. So this is the this is the result of a lot of, a lot of a lot of work, and not only on the mapping side, but also on the on the business side. So um, it's not this is not this is not something you can just kind of yeah. Well, next 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 we'll do next we'll do Chrysler or next we'll do uh, Fiat or whatever. Um, it's just not how it works, unfortunately. One more. So forgive me if this is in the stupid question uh, category, but uh, if I wanted to just use uh, navigation on my f phone that I have right now, what would be a good uh, app for me to download? Oh, there's in the U.S. or in general? In the U.S. particularly. Yeah, so, um, so we have we have Scout as a as a so the product's called Scout. Um, there is a mobile app uh, that that covers the U.S. with OpenStreetMap. It has been there since 2013, so that's that's an offering of ours that you can use if you have if you have an Android phone. There's definitely other options as well um, from like uh, uh, from uh, from uh, from the community. Like there's OSM and there's a um, there's a, there's a, there's Maps.me. So there's lots of things that you can get OpenStreetMap Open Street on your phone for navigation. But Scout is a, is has been around for a while. It's been battle tested, and I still use it every day. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna keep moving. You've got one last question. Just a quick question. So I noticed in the uh, in the one slide that Matt Pillory was, uh, I guess, used in this process or a partner. Is this is this OpenStreetCam imagery available in Matt Pillory or is it uh, kept separate? Well, they're both available in OSM editors, so it's like it's separate platforms, but they're they're both they both com converge in the OSM editing software. So if you load Jossum, we're working on the ID integration also. So both, uh, so, so, so even though they're separate platforms, you can use both. You can use them side by side. Our mapping team uses it side by side also. Okay. So there's no, there's no reason to have, to have just one or the other in that sense. Thank you. Great.